Myocarditis is inflammation of the cardiac muscles following an infection, trauma, or ischemic events to the heart. It is also associated with rheumatological diseases such as systemic lupus erythematosus. Myocarditis can be acute or chronic. For most cases in routine clinical practice, a specific etiology is not found. Viruses remain the most common cause and often are presumed to be the causative agent in cases without a proven etiology. The viruses identified include adenovirus, echovirus, cytomegalovirus, influenza, or Coxsackie virus. Other infectious causes include bacterial, fungal, and protozoan. The heart is a muscular pump which pushes blood to the rest of the body. Cardiac muscle fibers typically have a single nucleus. They are branched and joined to one another by intercalated discs that contain gap junctions. The intercalated discs and gap junctions form a syncytium of cardiac cells, allowing the heart to contract in a coordinated unified manner. The desmosomes hold the fibers together when the heart contracts. The contractile unit of cardiac muscles are the sacromeres, which is made up of myosin and actin filaments. The two protein filaments slide past one another to cause a muscle contraction. Troponin is attached to tropomyosin and is involved in muscle contraction. Cardiomyocytes contain many mitochondria to produce large amounts of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and myoglobin to store oxygen to meet the demands of muscle contraction. The pathophysiology of viral myocarditis is based on studies of the enterovirus, specifically the Coxsackie virus. The Coxsackie binds to the Coxsackie adenovirus receptor, abbreviated CAR, on the surface of myocytes. This binding allows for viral entry into the intracellular fluid. The endosome releases the virus and its genetic material, which then integrates into the host's DNA. Now, once integrated into the host's DNA, the DNA is transcribed and then is translated by the ribosomes into structural capsids, protein, and proteases, which are unique for the virus. The structural materials, components of the virus, allows for formation of the new viruses, which then gets released again outside, and then the cycle can continue. The virus can infect other cardiac muscle cells. Some of these proteases which are made uh, inside the host's cardiomyocytes can actually injure some surrounding uh, proteins. They cleave the myocyte cytoskeleton, for example, as well as cleaving uh, dystrophin. Now, dystrophin is an important component of the dystrophin glycoprotein complex that actually links the cytoskeleton of the cell to the extracellular matrix outside. So basically acts as an anchor for the cardiomyocytes to the outside world. Infection of the heart damages the heart. A damaged heart will release its uh, cellular components to the outside world, the extracellular space. And this will trigger the activation of the host's antiviral immune response which is characterized by the infiltration of natural killer cells, macrophages, and then this will be followed by virus-specific T lymphocytes, T cells. The immune activation contributes to the progression of myocarditis. The immune activation contributes to the progression of myocarditis, and this can lead to something called dilated cardiomyopathy which is where the ventricles become dilated, reducing, thus impairing, heart contractility. 
and so impairing cardiac output. Inflammation of the cardiac muscle cells by any cause will result in chest pain and leakage of troponin into the bloodstream from the damaged sacromeres. The inflammation of the heart impairs heart contractility and filling, leading to reduced cardiac output, and so leading to varying degrees of heart failure. Some people may need support with ionotropes to increase heart contractility or mechanical circulatory support to assist the heart in contraction. Prior to the pain and elevation of troponin, patients may be asymptomatic or they may have a viral prodrome which is manifested as fevers, myalgias, and muscle soreness, bone soreness. Remember that viruses, again, is the most common cause of myocarditis. Bacterial causes of myocarditis is less frequent. However, invasion of the bloodstream by any bacterial pathogen can result in myocardial seeding and microabscesses forming, such as in complications of Staphylococcus aureus, Necessaria meningitidis, Salmonella, and other bloodstream infections. Now you have some other special types of myocarditis. There's something called giant cell myocarditis, which is a rare, acute, and frequently fatal form of myocarditis that typically occurs in young persons who do not respond to standard heart failure medical management on presentation. Giant cell myocarditis is often rapidly progressive and can cause both left and right ventricular dysfunction. Giant cell myocarditis is also associated with an increased incidence of high-grade atrioventricular block and ventricular arrhythmias. This disorder has been attributed to T-cell mediated inflammation and is associated with systemic autoimmune disorders in 20% of cases. A biopsy of the heart shows prominent myocyte necrosis, so death, associated with a multifocal or diffuse inflammatory cell infiltrate composed of T-cells, and there's also a characteristic feature which includes multinucleated giant cells, hence the name giant cell myocarditis. Then there's another type of myocarditis called eosinophilic myocarditis, and this is inflammation of the cardiac muscle cells characterized by eosinophilic infiltrates. And may be associated with malignancy, parasitic infection, or even hypersensitivity reactions. Eosinophilic myocarditis is fatal and presents with sudden death or rapidly progressive heart failure, usually with a rash, fevers, and peripheral eosinophilia. Biopsy of the heart muscles with patients who have eosinophilic myocarditis show cardiac muscles, obviously with eosinophilic infiltrates. Investigations for myocarditis or suspected myocarditis include your standard blood tests, troponin, and viral bacterial serological studies. An echocardiogram is useful to assess degree of heart failure as well as to assess for other potential complications or causes of heart failure, such as ischemia causing heart failure, amyloidosis as well. An electrocardiogram may reveal conduction abnormalities. As mentioned, uh, in giant cell myocarditis, it can cause atrioventricular blocks. Definitive diagnosis of myocarditis may require cardiac magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, or endomyocardial biopsy. An endomyocardial biopsy Treatment of myocarditis is supportive treatment. Anti-inflammatory agents are not of benefit in the treatment of acute myocarditis. However, if pericarditis is suspected, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's recommended that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are used, and even prednisolone, steroids, can be used.
Standard therapy for myocarditis is heart failure management, essentially, which includes ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, plus beta blockers and spironolactone. For patients who do not respond to these basic medical therapy, uh, sometimes we need inotropes to help with cardiac output, or even mechanical circulatory support, which are your ventricular assist devices. And obviously, last line is cardiac transplants for those who definitely need it. Thank you for watching. In summary, myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle cells, usually caused by a virus. However, in most cases, an etiology is not found. The management of um, myocarditis is essentially heart failure therapy medications. Thank you for watching.